Hey guys, welcome out to uh, Marine Products today. Um, and thanks to Marine Products for having us and allowing us to put a seminar on. Um, and then we'll have uh, Corey Baker with uh, Kokanee Crew Outfitters come up just after I finish here today. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started here. Just a quick intro, I just want to let you know who we are and what we're about. We're about five years old, so we're fairly new. Um, back in 2018, my son and I have a background in manufacturing coatings and, and lean manufacturing, so we started to ask ourselves, can we build a quality squid rig, putting quality components in that rig and still be able to make enough money for gas to go fishing? Um, the answer was yes. After about two seasons of fishing, we had a lot of fells out there trying different types of line. Um, we found that on your squid rigs, not only is it important for them to catch fish, but to get the fish from where it's at to the boat is one of the more, more important things we think. We think. So we went with a cigar, a cigar fluorocarbon 15 pound, which is about the largest diameter to fit through a size four octopus hook. Um, and then with hooks, at first we were trying eagle claw and we were, have, we were seeing some failures with the eager, eagle claw, so we went with the VMC hooks and that eliminated any hook failure. Um, we've got people out there, I know Taylor Pierce, one of our pro staff, he's got squids that he's been running for four years, the same squid. So I'm a firm believer if you pay four or five bucks for a squid, it better last. It, if it's only lasting two fish, that's, that's an issue. Um, all of our products we extensively test, we pass them out to our pro staff and then we use them ourselves that whole season prior to releasing them to the public in the spring. So what you see on our board of tackle is going to catch kokanee. It's going to be effective. And it may only be effective certain times a year, but it's, it works. There's no half-baked products on there. Um, another question I was asked is, well, you guys are just fishermen. Why did you want to start Kokanee Co.? And uh, we're, we're a very passionate family when it comes to kokanee fishing in the outdoors. Um, we believe that every kokanee you catch counts. So every, every hookup you have on a fish counts. Getting it from the lake into the boat. It's very important. Um, and then one of our big philosophies is if we build the very best quality tackle that we can, we know we'll survive. We're able to compete with others. Next. Okay, so let's talk about um, how to locate kokanee. And I don't know if you guys are, do you guys use the maps in your boat? Yes? Okay, one of the most important things you can have running on your boat splitting your screen, looking at your fish finder, and then having your maps. Now the maps I'm talking about are bathmetric maps. What we wanna see is we wanna, we wanna be able to virtually look under the water and look what that landscape looks like under the water. Um, topographic maps of the seafloor produced at one to 100,000 scale that contain Loran sea rates, bottom sediment types, and known bottom obstructions. This product is intended to aid fishermen and those needing seafloor features and potential fishing grounds. So not only should the guys out there commercial fishing be using bathmetric, but we should all be using it as well. And we'll talk about it a little bit further as we go down through here. Okay, so let's talk about, the, most of us have the Navionics maps on our uh, boat screens. 
the Navionics maps are actually created by Garmin and then sold to all the other companies like Hummingbird, Lawrence, that. They're the, the king of maps. Um, so let's, what we want to focus on, and what I've got here, if you recognize it, is there is buckboard up in the top left-hand corner, and I've highlighted the river channel in red. Can you all see that? So the next thing we want to talk about that took me years to learn is that all reservoirs have current in them. And it's hard to think about that when you're out in the middle of a lake or a reservoir, but that current is flowing and following that old river channel. So the food is going to tend to want to follow and go down in there. The current is carrying the zooplankton, the food, um, and then our particular points that we want to look at are in bends, okay? So you can see a bend here, comes around. This is big bend in here. There's a lot of uh, mac fishing that's done in here. And then you have, right in this area, you're going to find Jap Island. That's a big kokanee fishing area. And then over here in that Breeze Hill area. Did any of you guys fish Breeze Hill? If you don't, you, you probably ought to hit this area. It's a great kokanee spot. They're typically larger kokanee up in that Wyoming side. And everybody asks me, they're like, are they, are they a different strain of kokanee? No, they're not. They're the same strain, but the food source is more up in this area. As it washes down into the Utah side, the, the fish become smaller. Um, so watch these hard bends. And if you are going to fish that river channel and follow that, which direct, let's say this is north up here, what direction do you want to be trolling? Anybody? I'd say down river. You can't answer. You're part of the team. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Good job. Let's let's throw a little something out. Oops. So if I'm trolling, let's say I'm, I'm in the Breeze Hill area here, and I'm along right in here. Typically, if the fish are gonna be pointing this way into the head first into the current, right? We have found that if I troll come up from behind them and pass them this way, they're more likely to hit, okay? So a lot of times we've been trolling up in this area and my wife and I are going, this is weird because we're only catching fish going north. So it took a while to figure out why, and I've heard different theories about this, where the sun's positioning and things like that. But what we have found is these fish in these reservoirs they're pointing like that for the most part. So we would have to go up, circle, you'd, you'd catch going this way, we'd circle back around and then catch this way. And it was frustrating because you know, as you're coming back around this way, they're not gonna bite. They just would not bite. But every time we could, so your circle's getting tighter and tighter and tighter to try and focus on those fish and that going in that direction. So we're talking a little bit about fish positioning. This is a, a picture with some salmon. And you, once we start thinking of reservoirs like rivers and thinking of that current, we're going to be better fishermen. We're going to realize that those kokanee are typically facing into that current, whichever way that river's running in. Um, 
again, it talks, this is at times, I think as kokanee fishermen, have you ever been out there trolling over a school and you've noticed that you're only catching them in one direction? More often times than not, it's, we don't really think to look at our maps and think which way that current flow is in. But if we can figure that out and we know, we'll be more successful. Again, following the bathmetric maps, it's key to have that on there to find those fish. If I know where that river channel is, I'm gonna find kokanee. I don't need to go out there and look for the crowd that's got 300 boats in it. I can do it with my fish finder. I can look at my maps and I know right where to go. Okay, now we're gonna talk about, this is something that Corey Baker and I have talked about for the last three or four years and we've been test driving this theory to see if it proves correct. We're gonna talk about boat ramps. So most kokanee are introduced at boat ramp locations, correct? Yes? This area is home for your class one to three. We've proven over the years that within 500 yards of boat ramps where kokanee are introduced, you will find a school. I have fished or tested this theory out on Flaming Gorge on Lucerne Ramp, Squaw Hollow, Buckboard, pretty much, pretty much all the, butt, the boat ramps. You will find a school of kokanee within 500 yards. Now, Corey fishes strawberry a lot, so I had him test that theory up there at the strawberry marine. He's like, you know, you're right. If I launch at strawberry, within 500 yards, there's always a school of kokanee. Now, the problem most people have when they're at the boat ramp, and I'm guilty of this too, I launch my boat, I head out of the wakeless area, and what do I do? I throttle down and go across the lake. I, I'm guilty of it too. But if you'll stop, slow down a little bit, watch your fish finder, you will, you'll find those kokanee within roughly 500 yards of the boat ramp. This is typically a smaller year class, your let's say 12 to 16 inch size kokanee. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about kokanee for a minute. Here's another thing that we, we commonly forget. Kokanee are salmon. They think totally different than a rainbow trout, a lake trout, all that. So let's talk about that three to five year class that we're all looking for. Did you know once kokanee are at the last year of life, they begin to migrate toward the current source? Did any of you, are you aware of that? So if I've got fish that were, let's say they're stocked down at Lucerne, they're in that three to five year class, they're starting to migrate away from the boat ramps, they're gonna start moving up towards the pipeline area, Anvil Draw area, Squaw Hollow area, Buckboard area, and then on up towards the confluence and up past Lost Dog. This is a constant thing from ice off to the fall. Um, this is not a fast process and this journey will on average last five months. So it's almost that entire season that those fish are migrating in large schools up through there. And a lot of times that's, that's why we find them in different spots. You go out there one day and you, you do really well and you kill them and then the next weekend you go out and they're not there. Well, there's, there's, those larger fish are starting to migrate. Okay, let's recap real quickly on locating kokanee. Maps showing bathmetric on your fish finder are key. I want you to, you should, you've got to always have that map running. You know where you're at, you know where the channel's at, you know that the kokanee are likely going to be over the channel and we're looking for hard bends. Boat ramp areas are where kokanee were introduced are generally easy places to lo locate kokanee. If you're going to a new water, always look in front of the boat ramp first, 
500 yards out, you'll likely see them in there. Um, attempt to troll into the current over old river channels, focusing on hard bends or deep areas. That's the other thing I want to talk about is when you're following that river bend, <clears throat> just like the one I just showed you up in Buckboard, Brees Hill area, you'll find spots that are 90 feet deep and you'll be going along and go, oh, there's a 200 foot hole in the river channel right there and it's, it's massive. Guaranteed that will be holding large kokanee. So look for those excessively deep spots over that river channel. Okay, let's talk about trolling tack. This is not a popular one. The hour of power, power hour. Be on the water and running gear far before daylight. You need to have your gear in the water, your rigs out, way before the sun comes up. If you want to be super successful at Flaming Gorge, be out there in the dark. You'll have all your lights running. You're, you're over your hole, you're seeing fish. And typically you want to be, my goal is I want to be limited out by 7.30. I want to be headed back for breakfast. That's usually when that crowd's starting to show up, that weekend warrior crowd showing up about, about 7.30 to head out. So you're coming in as they're going out, you're done. Never troll in an absolute straight line. Keep your gear in a micro weave pattern, which will speed up and slow down the speed of your gear. Okay, so oftentimes I've, I've got my uh, bow mount and I'm using it to steer and I'm running my kicker motor for thrust. And I forget I have it on like a, a north or a cruise control. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going like perfectly straight. I need to take that off. I can run my cruise control, I call it cruise control, my speed at a set speed. But I kind of want to, I want to weave back and forth as I'm trolling. Um, our number one pet peeve is watching others troll through a school we are focused on and they hook up and they keep trolling into the horizon. This is a common thing that I've seen probably in the last 20 years. I found my school of Kokanee and I'm either trolling a circle around that school or I'm running a figure eight through that school. And I'll see boats coming down following the, the river channel and sometimes they'll catch one or a double hook up. They'll net, they're screaming and yelling, they're happy, and they keep trolling and they disappear. And then at times I think, what are these guys doing? But then I'm like, oh, well, I'm thankful they left my school and I can just focus on it. But you will be far more excessive st or successful staying on that school and attacking them. You just keep attacking and attacking. Stay on the fish. Um, and then last here, do not drop your gear unless you're marking fish, period. Don't go out and go, well, the kokanee should be here and just start trolling. That's time wasted that you could be catching. So we usually get out to our spots, my wife and I, and I'll go about three miles an hour where I think they're gonna be scanning for fish. And if I see them, I'll throw the brakes on the boat and we'll let down right there. We'll focus on that school for a few minutes. If they're active, I'll stay with it. And a lot of times what I found is I found a good school of kokanee and there's another school 200 yards off, which creates the perfect scenario because I can stay on this school and go back and forth. So I'm not spooking the fish, I'm just going back and forth, school to school, and staying on them. Okay, trolling tactics continue. Let's talk about color selection. At first, we always run a different color of squid or spaz on each rod we're running. So you should have a minimum, depending on how many people you have in your boat, of course, but two rods per person, always, period. And I'm gonna run, when I get started, I'm gonna run four different, 
for my wife and I, we're running four rods. Each one of those rods is going to have a different color. It's best guess each morning. So I usually try to run my primary colors for kokanee, which are, does anybody want to try primary? I heard pink and orange, chartreuse. You're not supposed to answer. <laughs> so pink, orange, white, green. Those are kind of, our, I, could, I could throw purple in there. Purple's been a pretty good one, but the last couple of years, green and orange has been really good as well. So we're going to have those four on there. Once we get catch in, um, we're going we're gonna to try to dial our, our rigs in a little bit. And let's say that um, green or orange is starting to pick up. So I'll switch another rod over to green or orange. So now I'm running two orange or two green. And then as that color catches, I'll start switching over to other colors. Um, tipping your spaz or squids with either, either Berkeley maggots or particularly pink maggots I like, or shoe peg corn in your favorite flavor and color. Also, do not be afraid to doctor up your Berkeley maggots. Take your favorite scent, squirt a shot of that in your maggots and let it sit for a week or two. It, sometimes it helps. I like the Berkeley maggots for the sole purpose that it's easy and fairly clean. I can just grab my jar and, and I go. I do like, I think corn's equally if, as effective. Um, but again, I guess I'm lazy and I'm just gonna go with the maggots. Leader lengths. Generally speaking, your leader length from your dodger to your squid should be 1.5 times the length of your dodger. Very important, too long of leaders. I see it often, people have leaders that are 18 to two feet. That may work on occasion, but for the most part, you want to see that squid or spaz, whatever you're using, you wanna see it whip. Every time that dodger does its thing, that squid should be whipping back and forth. If you put it in the water next to your boat and you just see it running straight and your dodger's doing this, you need to shorten that up. Shorten it up three or four inches at a time, but try to keep in mind that 1.5 times the length of your dodger is key. Um, we typically run all our downriggers at different depths until finding the optimum fish catching depth. So for like my wife and I, I'll run, I typically like to run one at the top of the school and one in the middle. And then if I have another downrigger running, I'll run one at the bottom of the school. So use those different depths and it won't take long and you'll start seeing that one of the depths is producing better than the other depth. But typically these fish are looking upwards so the, that top depth is generally better, but you'll typically find the bigger cokes just to the bottom of that school, along with lake trout pups. But Okay, don't be afraid to run gear through fish you suspect are not kokanee. Years ago, I was up fishing Flaming Gorge in the Breeze Hill area with James Klein. Um, and we were looking at the graph, we're catching kokanee, and he's like, Mark, there's kokanee down in the river channel right on the bottom. And I'm like, James, those, there's no way. Those have gotta be pups down there. And he's like, run some gear through there. And we run some gear through there and we start catching huge cokes that were down there. It is known that the three to five year class will eat crawdads, minnows, et cetera. We have caught large, mature kokanee on the edges of old riverbeds deep that when flaying contained crawdads. And I know people think oh, they're kokanee only eat zooplankton. That is not true. When you get into that bigger year class, they need to start bulking up. They're consuming more and they're starting to look for bigger mills like crawdads, minnows, things like that. Um, 
The next comma is never leave fish to find fish. Quite often, I've got people in the boat and we're doing our circle, we're going around a school or something and they look at me and they're like, hey, look, what, what about that spot over there? And I'm like, hey, every time we come through in this direction, we catch a kokanee or two kokanee. As soon as we're not catching, then we'll move. But if you're catching one or two every time, stay with it, keep hitting it. Try and tighten your circle or your figure eight and maximize right over the top of that. Um, the last tip I wanna give you is vertical. How many of you guys vertical jig? Okay, you should always have one or two rods in your rod locker. It's rigged with your vertical jig. We like the um, P-line type jigs. They look kind of like a, like a buzz bomb or GSO. If you get on gsofishing.com, they also sell them. They're out of Colorado, really good people. They're glow in the dark. We like to tip our jigs with uh, Berkeley maggots or corn. But the thing vertical jig jigging can give you, and I've seen this at Flaming Gorge quite a bit, you'll go through a school and you'll try everything and you, you see them, you know they're there, but they just won't bite. It doesn't matter if I increase my speed, if I slow down, I can't get them to bite. But if I anchor, spot lock and anchor over the top of that school and I start jigging for them, I start getting bites. So now I'm, I'm getting a reaction strike rather than a feeding bite. This is also super effective on spawning kokanee. It's virtually the only way you're gonna catch spawning kokanee. Um, you get over that school. Uh, there are certain areas in Flaming Gorge where there's gravel beds and these are a natural occurring kokanee that spawn in those location year after you know, the, the different generations going up. But you'll see out there, and usually around Labor Day weekend, <clears throat> you'll see groups of boat over these gravel or spawning beds, and it is a blast. You can use a jigging rod or a spinning rod. Find out what depth they are. It, it's weird that oftentimes at Flaming Gorge, I find them right on the bottom. And over in the Soldier Creek area, I find them suspended get over those and you can literally sit there and catch them. We don't keep any red kokanee. I have no desire unless it's five pounds or above. But uh, it is a blast to sit on top of those fish and just, you get four or five guys in your boat, you're just jigging and typically on the Wyoming side up there at Flaming Gorge, you'll get a, gr I've seen groups of boat with 150 boats in there almost to where you could walk across the boats. And the cool part is, is everybody's getting along. Everybody's having fun. There's plenty of fish for everybody. And you can stack those fish up. And a lot of times you'll still get silver kokanee mixed in with the reds. A lot of females, big females that are silver will still be in there. So you can really load up on them in there. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Yes. On our squid rigs and our spas, we use a number four VMC, red octopus. Okay. Yep, and then on the, your jigging type lures, you're gonna find that you, almost all of them have a treble on there. Any other questions? Yes? So you were saying that you'll, you'll more than likely find a, a school of fish 500 yards from the boat ranks. Yep. Are the river channels that close to? Are well, it's funny, so uh, Cole, can you take us back to that one that showed the maps? And I'll, I'll show you something quite interesting. Okay, right there. So, here's Buckboard Marina that channel's like right there. And in the early spring, there's usually a fleet of boats right here. Almost guaranteed every spring. 
if you go, I don't have any other boat ramps down. We're getting close to Squaw, but I, I've kind of cut it out right here. But if you look at the river channel, even Lucerne, the river channel goes right in front of Lucerne. I like, I almost always am starting out at 1.5. One five? Is it very winter and summer? I would slow down a little bit in the, uh, in the early spring, like right now. If I was going to go up there, the ice is just coming off Flaming Gorge. I, again, I would start off at 1.5. If I'm not getting bites, I'd go down 1.4, 1.3. That's a very, Alex, come up here. That guy needs a, he needs a, he needs a lure. That's a great question. We did the ISC show earlier this year and got, I had a number of people come ask me that and they're telling me, well, I run my gear always 150 feet to 100 feet behind my downrigger ball and I about, pa I'm like, Wait, you what? So typically I will run 35 feet standard but last year we were catching them we were using these glow in the dark ones we were i think it was late july and we were seeing how well it attracted the kokanee and we were fishing seven feet behind the downrigger ball 35 feet down that those fish are literally under the back of my boat so I, I, I would say start at that 35 feet and move around. If you feel like, if you're up nor, near the surface, you'll, you'll hear Corey tell you he's, he's going back that 100 feet, but he's not running them on a downrigger weight. He's running them right on the top surface. Does that answer your question? Yes. I'm, Nope, I'm using, um, like if you go to GSO or P-Line, you'll see they have a jigging spoon. And it looks like a buzz bomb, kind of a long, narrow thing. Any four, three quarter to one ounce, they're solid lead. Typically, they're your basic hot kokanee colors with the treble. And... Uh, Jigging for kokanee is just like using squids. There's the color of the day. Some years it's chartreuse, orange, both those I've done good. Pinks at some times is good. But have have a few of those in your boat. Yep. Yep. They will they once they come up and strike it, they need a little love to keep them on. So it, having maggots or corn, I said whatever's your favorite flavor, I think they Produce the same. More other question? Yes. The river channel and strawberry. You would have to. Ask, Corey is our strawberry guy. I don't have uh, the other one that's really frustrating for me is Jordanelle, um, and I don't believe there's a bathmetric map for it yet. But if you could find that river channel, how it winds through Jordanelle, you'd be more effective up there. Because Jordanelle is one of those places you're either going to catch them or you're not. There's not like a halfway in between. But if we could find, there's got to be a map showing the bottom of strawberry as old as it is. I'm sorry to hear you. Repeat the question. Repeat what my question, your question? Oh, I, would you want, would you mind repeating that question? <laughs> I asked what the river channel was in strawberry. Thanks. So <laughs> <laughs> you better give him a, he, he's working hard up here. I got a question. Yeah. With regards to your setback from your ball to your dodger. Mm hmm what are the conditions where you would want it shorter versus when you might want it longer than that 35 feet? So the, the fun thing about having it shorter, say that seven feet, like you'll have your rods bending over like this, right? They're loaded up in the downrigger. 
And when that fish hits and releases, that fish is literally right there. So my odds of getting it into the boat are a lot better. We've all caught kokanee that have been out there 35, 55 feet. You're reeling it in and you start seeing it jumping. And what's the first thing that comes to your mind? He's gone. It's super important for you to be using a kokanee rod so that you have that flex. You will definitely hook up on more fish. Right now I like, so in our boat right now I have a couple edge rods, super nice rod. Um, it's a one piece, it's a graphite base. Um, and you can really, it's got the spiral wrap guides on it. It's got a little more backbone in it than most rods, which I like, because these, these cheaper, inexpensive kokanee rods, you'll see, it's like you're trying to fight a fish on a limp, limp noodle, right? When you get the boat there and somebody's trying to net for you, that fish is like, it's going all over the place because your rod is like doing this stuff. The edge rod with a little bit more backbone in it, I can control the fish when I'm at the boat. If you're ever fishing with me, you'll hear me if somebody's doing this, I'm like, you got to control the fish. The other thing too, keep your wad 90, 90 degrees to the fish and let the fish bite the wad, not your drag. Right. Of, I watch a lot of people point their pole at the fish and 90% of the time they're going to lose that fish if you're pointing their pole at the fish. Yep. Try to it, keep your hand at the fish, keep your wad one side or the other. Yep. And then bring the, ball, the fish up, try not to avoid it, but somebody there with the net ready to go to put it in the net. Right, right. So, go ahead. Have you uh, ever experienced, I know I've done a lot of times I'll be cruising along maybe one five, one two, might be 35 feet out. I'll see a school slide cut the wind and let it twirl down. Oh. I've never tried that technique. Did you hear that, Corey? So he, this is an interesting technique for you guys. He's found a school of active fish, and as he gets over the fish, he'll slow down to almost to completely shut off the motor and let the gear follow down through the school. It falls right in them, and a lot of times they'll take it, not all the time. And then sometimes they'll take it when they start up again. Yeah, that's, that's a great technique. I, the last couple of days I often, I thought to myself, as we do this seminar, and you get, say, 100 people there that kokanee fish, if you can all work together and share ideas, we'll all be more successful. And I knew that coming here today, I'd probably learn something. Every trip we take out fishing, I try to think of some way I can improve or something I can do better for my next trip. And over 20 years, you start develop, you start getting better and better and better. But the other thing to remember too is we, we talk about limits and filling the live well and all that thing, but really it's about being out there with your buddies or your family, creating memories and being out in the outdoor, getting fresh air and getting out of the, I call it the, you know, the, the real world, the, the reality down here. I don't want. I don't want this reality. I want that reality up there at the lake. I want to be with my family and friends. And um, what color do you like? Do you like, like it's a real cloudy day. A lot of people don't know their stuff. We've got a real cloudy day. You go with the dark colors. Yep. Uh, bright sunny day. You go with the bright silver white colors. Yep. Yeah. If you're fishing, you'll find if you get up. Let's say you're out there on the water at 5:30 a.m and you've got a color, we, the purple nurple is a big uh, fishing in the dark kind of color for us. As soon as that sun hits, you're gonna find that now everything's changed. Like you said, now I'm gonna be looking, the brighter the day, the brighter the color. But it's kokanee fishing, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you're out there and the opposite of what you're thinking, that color's working. Yes? I don't, and I, I'll tell you why. I, at first I did years ago, I would, I would try to find that magic depth 
with that magic temperature. And I think Corey can also reaffirm this, that I've seen kokanee in 80 degree water. I've been out trolling and seen schools of them swim by me. Or uh, oftentimes, Corey will talk about um, long lining when you're down rigging of always having one on the surface. And tip, and so you're seeing fish down at let's say 35, 45 feet, and then you've always got one rod going out the back on the surface. You will never see Corey's boat without a long rod or, or Taylor, any of our guys. So to say they're all at that depth at that temperature, I don't think so. I don't think Kokanee are afraid to come out of that temperature zone to find the food. So you'll find them on the top, in the middle, and all over the place. And lake trout, same kind, same kind of thing. I've seen them come up to where you could visibly see them, you know, maybe 20 feet down when the water's 70 or 80 degrees. So they're not afraid to come out of that comfortable depth to feed. Does that answer your question? Do we have anybody else? So speaking on the depth side, Matt, how effective like early season or even mid season? Uh, someone's touched on the planer board side. Uh, do you guys feel that's effective or do you guys just keep running down? Corey's going to have a different opinion than I am. I'm going to tell you no. I think you wasted some money on down on side planers for kokanee. And I've used them for walleye and my son will argue with me. I'm like, no, you catch just as much fish out the back. I would think the only time I would run one is if I needed a way to spread out more lines. Corey runs outriggers on his boats so that he can have, not necessarily to get away from the boat, but to get more lines out behind the boat. That is a tough one. The one that so, you know, it's, it's funny though. I would say 10 years ago, pink was the color, right? You did pink, 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 pink. And, the la and then it kind of went to pink and purple. And, the last, and then it kind of went to orange. And I would say last year was chartreuse. But if I'm looking, I'll be honest with you, if I'm going, let's say I'm going up to Flaming Gorge for the first time this year, I'm going to head up by the pipeline and I can almost guarantee I'm going to put on a Pepto Pink Spaz and I w that will catch like you can't believe. That's going to be my, I've always got a Pepto Pink Spaz, it's my searcher squid or my searcher lure to see where the kokanee are and then if I like I can dial Try to dial your color in, right? You got the Pepto spaz out, you're catching. Try using some different variations to see if they work any better. Um, but again, typically in the fall, the colors, the crazier colors are better in the fall than they are in the spring and summer. Questions? What's, I'm sorry. Okay, so the myth is, I'm gonna call it a myth, that your dodger needs to match your squid. And it, I don't know if it's human nature or what, but typically we, we're picking out our rigs and we try to match the color of our dodger to our squids. Do I think it matters? I, I don't. I think go with your favorite. We have a couple favorite Dodgers that we really like that I typically always run. And again, like with the squids, I want to run four different Dodgers. Yes? I catch far more fish in the morning, typically before the sun comes up, but that is a good question. A lot of times up at Flaming Gorge, um, I've, this is kind of how our routine runs. Okay. We go out super early in the morning. We're hopeful to get our fish, head back in, have brunch, lunch, whatever you call it, 
take a nap, and then there's always somebody that wants to go out in the evening. Hey, we got three hours left, let's run out. And more often times than not, I've done well in the evenings. So there are times, I know that people back east in uh, Vermont, those kind of areas, they primarily fish for kokanee and they jig for them at night with a light. So that's a very good question. I've, I haven't tried that yet at Flaming Gorge, but I'm dying to get out there one night, put a light in the water and see if, because I'd never heard till I talked to some people back there. So that's a great question. Do we have any others? Yeah. It does quite a bit. So one reason that we went with the fish shape downrigger ball is it tracks. It tracks super good. So if I'm doing a figure eight, I need to keep my gear. I don't need it wandering out, right? So if I'm using a ball type downrigger weight, you're gonna see that thing swing out. And I, I definitely think that that fish shape is better for con for me controlling my rig as I'm trolling. I need to keep everything tight. I don't want anything wandering out. The other thing you'll find um, is I think the fish shape weight runs through the water more naturally. It's, it's creating less of a disturbance through the water as it cuts through the water than a ball. Mm hmm Yes, sir. Does a fish shape uh, still give you vibration in your line, in your steel line? I love that noise. That's what I, when I go to sleep, I love that whine, that brrrr. Yes, it does. It still will give you that vibration. I promise you, if it's a female coconut, it matters if it matches. <laughs> but I ask my wife that. She'll tell you. I, you'll find me. I go in there and I'm like, okay, I'm going to put on a pink spaz and I grab a pink spade dodger to go with it. It's just how our brains are wired as humans that we have to match. I'm sorry. I The best weight? Yeah, I like eight pounds. It works. If I've tried 10 pounders and it seems really hard on that downrigger. As I'm traveling through the water, going through waves, that extra two pounds out on the end, I can see my gunnels doing this stuff. So I, I like eight. I think six is a little light, but I'd be willing to look at sixes on for the shallower. The less disturbance you can make with your down rigger weights, the more fish you will catch, I promise you. I, we've done experiments with uh, running snap weights compared to down riggers. You'll always, almost always catch more fish running with a snap weight than you will a down rigger. But I can't troll precisely running 100 feet of line back there with a snap weight either. And I also, the thing we've found is where you're reeling it in, somebody's got to snap that weight off before I can reel it in further to get the fish to the boat. So I run, and I got this from Corey, I run one long line out the back with a, with a snap weight or no weight at all times, and I know that that rod will catch. I, so I'm not into the moon phase thing, but I've got guys on my team that like plan trips according to the moon phase and they'll swear by it. Mark, I don't care. I'm just going to go fishing. I'm not going to worry about the moon phase. Let's go. I, I would tell you if I could give you any advice, kokanee fishing, to make you successful, it would be first, number one thing, be on kokanee, be on the fish. The number two thing I would tell you is stay on the fish. Once you, 
somebody asks a question, so after they say it, can you repeat it through the microphone so everybody oh, can hear it? Oh, that's a great so idea. This way they can't hear that's a great idea. Thank you. So one, be where the kokanee are at, and two, stay on the kokanee. Stay where the fish are. That, that really goes for any fish, any lake fish. Don't randomly troll out there. We, we often laugh at times where we don't say we're going out fishing, we're going hunting. And I think of fishing as the guy that is on the shoreline with his power bait slung out there, right? He's hoping, there's no skill, he's hoping that a fish will come by and hit his gear. Now, if I'm hunting, I'm actively looking for fish. And when I find the fish, I'm gonna attack them. So that's, that's Mark's version of fishing and hunting. Start going hunting. When you go out kokanee fishing, think, I'm not going fishing, I'm hunting them today. There's some walleye fisherman guys in here, and I bet you, if you asked him, he would tell you, I'm not gonna randomly troll out there. I'm not even gonna cast until I know 100% that I'm confident there is fish right there. And if I throw out different colors at different speeds and different baits and they don't catch, then I'm gonna go hunting again and I'm gonna find a new location. Any more questions? Yes? What's your preference on dodger size? So his question is on dodger size. What, what dodger size should I use? So early in the spring, my absolute favorite dodger is the spade dodger. And the reason is, is there's like almost no drag, okay? And with that, I'm gonna get more fish into the boat. I don't have that fish fighting that, that dodger, right? As the season progresses, then I start moving up into the four five super or the six two five late in the year when it becomes tougher, say late July, August, go up to that 625 and you'll be shocked. If you go, if you use the 625 early in the year, you'll find that you lose a ton of fish, not only because that fish is battling the, the um, dodger, but as, as that fish is jumping around, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of pull and the fish have got softer mouths early in the year, and you're just ripping mouths out. I've had guys that have they have asked me what to use, and I'll send them up there, and they're like, hey, I was using the 625, and I was losing fish after fish after fish. This is like April, May at Strawberry. I'm going, well, they're not mature enough yet. You don't need to go, if, if you're getting your butt kicked, go big then put that 625 on. When they're a little trickier to catch late dry in August, go big. Any more questions? Yes? So his question is, does the position of the sun affect the fishing? And I would say, yeah. You need to adapt to that, is what I would say, because it will affect the fishing on, we know as kokanee fishermen, that as the sun comes up, the higher the sun is, the more the fish are gonna disperse. That's why we're trying to get out there before the sun's even shining. That way we don't, we don't have to fight with the sun, it's the best bite, but as that sun does come up and it's at different angles, it, it can affect what you're using. So you're gonna to wanna to change different color. You wanna change dodgers, things like that. Anybody else? Okay guys, let's, uh, we wanna welcome, oh, did we have a question back there? No, we're good? Okay, guys, we want to uh, welcome, yeah. Yes. So his, his question is, is in the mornings when it's still dark, are you using glow type lures or that type of stuff? <clears throat> and my answer to that is almost all of my stuff glows. I think, I do think it helps. Um, but typically 
you want those darker colors. Um, somebody up here was talking about that earlier, that, that purples, blacks, things like that. So the darker it is, the darker the squid. As the sun comes up, start rotating. But again, there's always that, that day when chartreuse was working in the dark. So don't be afraid. If you've got glow, if it's gonna glow in the dark, you're good to go.